Here is a detailed description of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. There are other names for this. Um, sometimes it's called a color magnitude diagram. Sometimes it is called a temperature luminosity uh, diagram. Sometimes it is called the HR diagram. Sometimes is it called the Russell diagram. So a lot of different names, but they're all basically the same thing. On the vertical axis, you have the luminosity of a star, which means you can uh, connect that to the absolute magnitude. Um, and on the horizontal axis, you have the surface temperature, which you can connect to the spectral class. And what it is, it's again a classification method. So we take stars that we observe, we figure out what their absolute true luminosity is and what their surface temperature is, and we plot them. And what we find is that when we plot all the stars we observe, the majority of them follow a diagonal line that goes from the upper left to the bottom right of this diagram. Some of them fall above it, but then almost no stars fall below it. There is this class of stars that we call white dwarfs, which you will read about in chapter eight of Birth and Death of the Sun. But I'm gonna say these aren't actually stars anymore because they're no longer fusing in the core. They're, they're kind of undead stars. Some of them are actually indeed vampire stars, um, but that's a, a story for a different day. So the this is a way to classify stars. Um, the vertical axis, notice that it has a logarithmic scale um, or an exponential scale, uh, whatever you want to call it, but 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1. Again, this is one solar luminosity. So what this X represents right here is the, the sun's placement. Um, you can see then that the X also corresponds to over 5,000 Kelvin. That's our sun's surface temperature. Um, the temperature scale is a little different from the luminosity scale. We start out at roughly 2300 Kelvin. This is about double that, not exactly, but for sake of argument here, 10,000 is double the 5,000, 20,000 is double 10,000, so on and so forth. So while the luminosity scale is increasing by a power of 10 as you go up, the temperature scale is just doubling as you go along the temperature axis. Um, you can plot something we call isoradius curves. And so what we've realized, and again, this is rooted in the Stefan Boltzmann law, that any star that falls along one of these lines has the same radius. So the temperature would be changing, but so is the luminosity. So they change in such a way that along this line represent stars of all the same radius, all the same size star. And so we call those isoradius lines. There is another relationship that we can look at, and that is that the luminosity of a star for only stars on this green patch, um, this green diagonal, um, is proportional to its mass to the 3.5 power. This is an interesting relationship. This is still, um, there's still some mystery as to, to why exactly this is, um, but it does indicate that all stars along the green line, the main sequence, are all doing something similar. Now, 3.5 power, again, you can look at that as the seven halves power. Um, so you can go backwards and say that L to the two sevenths power is proportional to M to the first power. Uh, just a little bit of algebra to rearrange going back and forth between either side. Um, so where does this go? Well, we're going to go on next to the actual HR diagram simulator.